Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at traders math. And this is something that I talk about a lot, uh, but I, and we actually have a blog post on with, with, that I just put out recently. Uh, but really what I want to do is take a second to deep dive into this in, in a video format so we can really understand what's going on here when I'm talking about traders math. So there are a few different things to clarify when I'm talking about traders math and, and what traders math is. Um, now, when I'm looking at traders math, uh, what I'm looking at is the direct relationship between your wins and your losses, and then taking that and comparing it to your accuracy. A positive number is good and a negative number is bad. The more positive, the better, and the, the more negative, the worse. Uh, it's, it's relatively straightforward. For example, typical scalping math for most traders that are profitable tends to come out to around a positive 800 to a positive 1,000, if not more. Now, you can use that in reference later to kind of what we're talking about, but um, really what we need to know is, well, we need four things, or like I said, at the very least three. Um, we need our average winning size, our average losing size, our winning accuracy, and our losing accuracy. So let's take math first as an example. And, and really kind of to demonstrate this, you, you just flip a coin, right? Heads or tails, I go long or short, and I'm going to pick right here. And heads or tails, I go long or short. And you kind of maintain that mentality of flipping a coin, going long or short, heads and tails. When you look at the odds of success on that, if you were going 50-50, and let's say on each side of it, you were risking 100 ticks. So you make 100 ticks when you win, you lose 100 ticks when you lose, and it's all about a coin flip. Realistically, in the long run, one would expect to be about 50% accurate. Now, here's the thing. If you're 50% accurate and you're winning and losing the same amount, that is fine if commissions weren't a thing, right? But the problem is commissions exist and context exists and it's not always a 50-50 coin flip. We can modify those odds to our favor or against our favor, but for a trade-off on higher reward. And again, that all comes back to our trader's math. So when we're looking at any type of situation, whether it's looking at our personal trading history, or if we're looking at a specific trade setup, we can ensure that the trader's math of any given situation is correct. Um, so let's take as an example, uh, the one that we wrote about in the blog. Um, so when we have a, uh, let's say a trader who is 40% accurate, right? So you've got a trader who is 40% accurate. And out of those 40% accurate trades, they're making twice as much as they're losing, right? So when they win 40% of the time, they're making a positive 200 ticks. And when they lose 60% of the time, they're losing a negative 100. So if you average that out over the long course and, and over the course of, let's just use easy numbers and say 100 trades, Right. If we take our 40% success rate at 200, that gives us math of 8,000. Then we take the other side of things, which is 60 times the, instead of, uh, in this case, 200, it would be 100. The losses are half as large. That gives us 6,000. So if we take our winning numbers minus our losing numbers, we have our trader's math. And this is at 2,000. That's a positive 2,000, which means that's incredibly positive ratio. <laughs> that's a really good trader's math to have when you're going into a trade. So the reason this is important is because what we can do with this is this can determine whether or not we're trading our pattern or our trade plans or whatever it happens to be successfully. If, as an example, you were a 50-50 trader, right? Let's go back to the 50-50 trader. But instead, you're making 1.3 to 1. So for every 100, you're making 130. Just that slight little difference, which could be a three-tick difference in a market like crude oil. You can see the probability shift in how that can make a huge difference in your long-term math. 50 uh, winning trades times 130, right? Times or well, minus 50 times the typical losing trade. In this case, instead of 130, it would just be 100. So 6,500 minus the 5,000, and you have an incredibly positive trader's math just by simply modifying something by three ticks. So it really can come down to a slight modification in numbers or potentially where you're entering because that's where the trader's math makes the most sense. 
So let's take a look at this as an applicable example in how I would use it during the market, right? Instead of using it to analyze my personal trading results and making sure that I'm trading appropriately, let's look at it in the form of the other side of things and making sure that a trade makes sense. So while the market is pulling back here, right? The market's driving down. We've got a nice continuation lower. And let's say I want to be a buyer. I don't know really where I want to be a buyer, but I want to be a buyer. Let's just hunt for something relatively straightforward, see if something stands out in terms of being a buyer here really quick. Once the chart loads up. Swap that to minute. There we go. So, okay, perfect example. Let's say that I want to buy this big dip. I, I don't know that the market's going to be able to go all the way down to 13,649.50, but let's say that I'm willing to take that shot and I want to place an order to buy at 13,649.50. Well, I've got to look backward at price and say, all right, well, where, where am I going to place my stop and where would I like my target to be? Well, if I'm looking for a target all the way back up to the highs, and let's say as an example, my stop is all the way down at the lows, judging by the way that this looks, just throwing darts at a board without any context, which of course we are using context. We've got the POC to at least back us up. That's something. It's better than just throwing dice. Uh, this allows us to offset our probabilities by a little bit. So we can assume that we're roughly about, let's say, 37% accurate, right? We're, we're on the low end at 37% accurate. If I were taking an entry here at 49.50 and my stop were underneath the lows of this move, and I wanted to ensure that I was going for a two to one reward versus risk. The one thing that immediately stands out is that if I wanted my target at the highs, I don't want my target above the highs. There, there might be a chance that I get it filled, but I would much rather try to get my target inside of the highs. So what, what can I do to make sure, again, trying to modify the probability in our favor as much as possible? I'm striving for that 37%. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to try to optimize my entry as much as possible. We can do that simply by modifying where our entry point is or where our stop is. So if I move my stop, let's say as an example, to this swing underneath here, right? This little bitty swing right there. Obviously, when my stop is that close, I'm begging to get stopped out. My probability cannot be very high. Well, we, know, we, are, we already know we're looking at about 37%. So logically, that kind of fits what we're looking to do. So if we wanted to bump this to an entry point of 49.50, but a slightly tighter stop, this would allow upside objectives that would still fit within the previous major volume node, and it would still allow a two to one. So let's take this in real action because we've got the numbers right here in front of us. We're 37% accurate, right? Let's say that we took this 100 times and I'm only right 37 times out of 100. It sounds like it's terrible odds, right? Like who would want to go to work and get punched in the face that many times and only be right that many times? Well, let me show you why trader's math is so incredibly important when we're looking at this, right? So let's say I've got my 37 trades out of 100. Out of those 37 trades, those are worth a positive $8,390, right? So 310430 Now, usually we don't look at the dollars and cents here, but that's just what's on my chart at the moment. And then we'll take the other side of things. Well, 100 minus 37 gives us 63. We take those losses, 63 times 4195. And that's assuming that every single trade is the exact same. But here you can see the power of that trader's math at 37% accuracy. Right, we have 310, 430 minus our losses of 264, 285. That's a positive expectancy of 46,000 on a trade like this over the course of a hundred times, being right 37% of the time. Right, I mean, you can close your eyes and throw darts at a board and be right more often than that. It's when we're looking at this type of thing, just a slight modification in context, like finding a POC. If you can line that up with a, a good structure point, like the bottom of a channel or the bottom of a range, maybe it's a break even point. All of these things modify that probability by just a little bit and even 1% in your favor makes a massive difference in your trader's math in the long run. Something to very much consider on every single trade that you're taking place. Because if I were to look at this like we were before from the entry point to the stop down here, Realistically, this doesn't make sense. I, I know that this trade is not going to be a very high probability trade because I'm forcing the market to have to go through the highs. Well, if I want to put a stop way down here, there are other ways that I could get my target inside the high by trying to get a slightly better entry. 
if I modify my entry point a little bit further down, not at the POC, but at the next volume node, just a little bit further down. Actually, I can creep that just a bit further, right about there. That gets our target inside at the highs, right? It fits inside the possibility of this little kind of inside double top. We've got all the volume here. It would be really nice to get a target that fits inside this volume node that's building. But regardless, this at least gives us a bit of wind in our sails. And again, we're only going for 37% likelihood. That's it. <laughs> I mean... I mean Again, it's it's tough to get much worse than that on, on purpose, <laughs> let alone doing it on accident. So when we have all of these things helping us out and we're going for these much larger objectives here again, let's say we're 36% accurate, right? Let's look at it slightly worse, just a 36% 30 accurate odds, because again, we're dealing with a pretty large objective at the upside. So 36 times it's worth 25,900. Then the other times, which again, 100 minus 36 gives us our losses, 64 times 12, 950. So we can see 828, 800, I'll just do a backward, 932, 400 gives us a, again, flip the script because I went backward, a positive expectancy of 103,600. If I were to take this trade over the course of 100 times and I were only right 36% of the time. It's absolutely ridiculous, but these are the types of things where that little 1% difference can make a huge difference in your trader's math, and that's why it's so important to make sure that you're on the right side of it at all times. So hopefully you found this useful and a little bit more indulging in terms of what I was talking about on the blog post side of things. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. Or if you need a more detailed response, might even be worthy of a video, shoot me an email, jhb at sssftg.com. I hope this video finds you well, and until the next one, we'll see you all then. Thanks.